lifting up the name of Jesus. You're having coffee with Conrad on. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. You're having coffee with Conrad and Jesus is in your ears, your face, and all around you because that's what I do. I love Jesus. I love people that love Jesus. Anyway, today I'm, I'm somewhat winging it. I, I took some notes today on a in prayer and this is something that's been persisting for quite some time. Um... For months, and I, I've been wanting wanting to articulate this in a podcast. wasn't really sure how to how to do it. So today, it feels it seems like today is the day to talk about this, and uh, I'm going to try to paint a picture here, and I want you to be sensitive to the spirit of God while I'm talking about this. It's um, I, I, I read Twitter. Uh, I read Facebook, I read Google+, and I post all these as well. And I, I'm thinking, you know, there's just a never-ending stream of people saying stuff. <laughs> people are saying stuff through social media. And I'm thinking, well, how much of this is anointed? And how much of my stuff, stuff, see, it's stuff, I like even call it stuff, is anointed? And... Um, and then I, I see people attracting, and, and even me, okay, I'm putting myself in here. Let's, let's take a look at this. I want us to take a look at this together. I'm not throwing stones at anybody. I'm in this war with you, and our goal is to transform America and then the world to Jesus Christ, okay? So we're, in the same, we're on the same page here. I'm your friend. But I have some faults, too, and, and I'm, let's, let's talk about this. Are we drawing too much attention to ourselves? Are we drawing too much attention to ourselves when we should be pointing at Jesus? Before I did this podcast, it came to me that real ministry happens when people don't even know your name, but the name of Jesus is being exalted. That's when real ministry takes place. It's when the Spirit seems to move. You can be in the, the front of the church praying for people. You can be on the street praying for people. And your name's not even important. Okay? And there's a scripture that comes to mind. It often comes to mind. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelation 2.17. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saying, He that receiveth. So it'll just be me and you. We'll just I'll know my name and you won't know my name, but Jesus will know my name. Right? There's something about the name. Exalting Jesus Memphis. Nobody's name was exalted except Jesus. There weren't even t shirts with ministries on there, and it was just like, you know, that was pretty powerful. And I saw a lot of people that didn't believe in the things of the Spirit all of a sudden get spirit filled. I mean, I saw the Spirit work in these prayer circles, and I'm like going, man, this is awesome. But nobody knew anybody's name. It was all about Jesus. And people were asking me, who are the singers going to be? And the whole idea is like, Jesus. It's just about Jesus. If that's not good enough for you, then then what does that say? Right? So, real ministry happens when people don't know my name. But it happens on the street. You know? When I talk to people in Walmart, or something, or someplace. Yeah, we introduce ourselves sometimes on the street in our, our neighborhood because we're neighbors, but sometimes out, out and about when we meet somebody, you have that word of knowledge, your name's not important. As a matter of fact, if you go through that, then you're formalizing the conversation. But my ministry, my ministry, dude, it's not my ministry. It's, our, it's Jesus. It's the ministry of Jesus, and it's our ministry as a collective body to get to know Jesus personally, and then make Jesus known. 
Amen. <laughs> and I'm sitting here, I'm in this prophetic ministry, and I'm glad somebody else is getting dreams around here. I'm like, thank you, Lord. Because if you're the only one, if you're the only one getting dreams about stuff, it is a real burden because then you have to go, man, I know this is God. And you're going it alone, it feels like. But other people are starting to get dreams and starting to act upon these dreams in the area. And that's so, such a relief that the Lord is speaking prophetically to his people. And people, he's been speaking, but the people are tuning in. You know, there's this corporate anointing. Like when Saul was uh, around the prophets, King Saul, he began to prophesy, right? And they said, is Saul among one of the prophets? Well, he caught that corporate anointing like David, my cup spent this you know, spills over. Um, that's why you need to get around people with the anointing that you feel that the Lord is, and I hate the word feel, that you sense the Lord is giving you. Feel is a connotation of the flesh. I, I really don't like that because many people confuse a fleshly emotion with following the Spirit, and they're not at all the same. So, Twitter. It's a never-ending stream of look at this word I have. Look at me. And I I examine myself here. I'm like, I pray about my tweets sometimes. Sometimes I tweet out a frustration. Yeah, you know, I'll be mad and I'll tweet about something. But most radical man on Twitter. And uh, oftentimes I'll pray about what to tweet. Or the Lord will just hit me with something. Like last night... Um, I was reading a book, The Sifted Generation, by Michael Henderson. Susan and I are reading this very timely book by Michael Henderson. And, you know, I'll take a line, and I was like, man, that's that's the right now rhema word for the moment. And I'll tweet it, or I'll put it on Facebook, or I'll put it on Google+. And I think, I think, see, it's, I, I, I'm struggling with, is it, uh, is it Conrad thinks, or is it the Lord? You know, I'm believing that the Lord is saying we need to kind of crucify the flesh. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. The world's crucified to me in its lusts. Um, so, is the Lord dealing with you on the look at me? Is he dealing with you on the look at my tweets? Look at my Facebook posts. Look at this revelation. I, 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 God. And, or are we getting these tweets, Facebook posts, Google Plus posts, whatever, from the Lord? You know, sometimes I'll get them, and I will even say, Lord, do you want me to post this at a later time? Because there's scheduling features. You can schedule it later. But one time in particular, I was at Christ the Rock Church, and Pastor Vizi in Land Passes, Texas. You know, I would uh, tweet out. People think I'm texting my friend or something. No, man, I'm tweeting anointed stuff. And um, it's also a great way to take sermon notes. <laughs> you know. But he would say something every once in a while, and I would tweet it with the hashtag VZ. You know, pretty simple. And one day he said something, and the Lord in the middle of this tweet goes, nope, this one's for Facebook. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I, I posted it to Facebook. Spiritual thing. And during the service, within a few minutes, what pastor, what the Spirit of God said through Pastor Vizi was not a tweet, but it was on a Facebook. This person wasn't on Twitter. Turns out they were recently diagnosed with cancer. They were only on Facebook. And that was the right now word they needed to hear. They could not go to church because they were too sick. But that word of the Lord that flowed through the man of God to my ears, through my phone, to them, touched them. Now, that wasn't Conrad. I'm happy to play a part in that. I used my thumbs, and I was listening to the Spirit. But it's not about me. See? God did that. 
I can't sit here and get all haughty that I'm just I'm just a part of the train. You know, I could be the caboose. I don't know. But my point is, we really do need to crucify our pride. So anyway, yesterday, I was going on this prayer walk. And, you know, I'm thinking about how things are going. I got blessed. I'm counting my blessings. And uh, all of a sudden, I see a couple of people that are not blessed in the way that I am. And it hits me in my spirit like a baseball bat to the gut. I'm not all that. You know, cross-culture witnessing. Like Paul, you know, you guys are, you made a monument to this unknown God and he was trying to reach through to these people through their culture. I become all things to all men. You know, and I, I was just sitting there yesterday. I'm like, oh man, that, that, that's a blind spot. Conrad rocks. Conrad has a blind spot. And I'm like, Lord, what do I do with this? So I'm still confronted with this information. I'm like, man, I, I, I'm nowhere near where I need to be in my Christian walk. So, you know, we need to really crucify our pride. And, you know, Acts 13, I'm always talking about Acts 13 how it's a good way to have a a church meeting. Now, there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Menaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work run to I've called them. And when they'd fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. So the deal is, there was no central sermon theme. They were all together. They're all in the boat together. Like me and you, we're in this boat together. We need to seek the Lord together. That corporate anointing, they ministered to the Lord. I would assume that's worship. Uh, or maybe they were ministering to each other. The gifts that Paul talks about later, minister your gifts one to another. And they fasted. That means it was a, a long meeting, a protracted meeting. And then the Holy Ghost said, it didn't say how he said it. I assume it was confirmed through several people. But see, there's no, there was no name exalted before this. They were seeking God. And then the real ministry came forth. The Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul. And then they laid their hands on them, and they went out. So I just kind of wanted to point that out. You know, seeking the Lord... And then he speaks. Acts 13 is something good to meditate on. I'm going to talk about um, a review of my book. I, I, I wrote a book, Open Your Eyes on My Supernatural Journey. It's about my supernatural encounters before and after Jesus. And I'm going to read a review. Many of us believe in the supernatural, but do you believe in the super supernatural, in a God who can and does amazing work in us? In this book, Conrad talks of the works of God's amazing power. It's important to note the first part of the book is before Conrad became a Christian. The second part is about the amazing things God does in his life, filled with biblical references and wisdom. Character's book will open spiritual eyes to the amazing thing God does to and through some people. If you're a fan of Rick Joyner, Chris Volaton, Bob Jones, or David Herzog, you will love this book. It will stretch your mind, but it is definitely worth the read. I highly recommend it, as it will show you what an amazing God we serve. So check that out. Open your eyes, my supernatural journey on Amazon and Kindle. God bless everyone. This is the Kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries at the number four, E-V-A, redeemed.com. You are listening to Coffee with Conrad on conradrocks.net. The Conrad Rocks app is now available. You can now take Conrad Rocks wherever you go. Many tabs right at your fingertips. Podcasts, YouTube videos, Conrad Rocks News, Facebook page, 
Google+, Twitter, and more. All things Conrad Rocks in one convenient place. Download the Conrad Rocks app on Google Play or in the iPhone App Store. Dig deeper. Go higher. You are having coffee with Conrad on ConradRocks.net. Welcome back. Bringing Jesus back to your face. You know, I'm using out loud. I often use myself as the guinea pig for a lot of these podcasts because I, I, I find blind spots in my life as I pray about it. And I'm like, you know, let's poke at it in front of people. You know, I've got, I've got some error. Let's just go ahead. I want you to pray for me. You know, pray for me so that you're healed. Isn't that interesting? That scripture says, pray for one another that you may be healed. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Be sure and pray for people. You'll get some healing. Anyway, so I was thinking, you know, I'm thinking about this, about my name, you know, my ministry. It's the Lord's ministry, and we are all in this boat together. We need to work as a team, you know. If people are paddling different directions on the same boat, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to spin in place, you know. So I believe we need to work together. And I'm thinking that, you know, when we learn strategies in Facebook, Twitter, social media, you know, keeping them to ourselves is not a good idea. If we see someone else that's anointed, you know, we should help them with our gifts. Um, And and strategizing, I'm thinking of that, let's let's just poke at strategizing for a minute. You know, strategizing is a carnal thing, right? It's something that we do. It's something that we think. When I was in the business world, I would strategize. You know, you put it to pen and paper, and if it's worked 50,000 times, it'll probably work again, you know, except God can come in and mess all that up, I'll tell you. He really can. Now, I believe in following the Spirit and strategizing, okay? But the Spirit, (laughs) the Spirit, following the Spirit is way more powerful than strategizing. I find that if I'm strategizing, I might have a selfish motive in it, right? If I'm strategizing just for myself. But if I pray about something and Jesus gives me a strategy, well, what did Jesus do? Jesus' strategy (laughs) was seeking God all night. Remember how he would stay all night in prayer, and then the next morning he came down with, okay, it's time to name the uh, apostles. So, and then he says, you know, we, we need to seek, let your will on earth, let your will in heaven be done on earth. You know, we need to seek that. We need to seek the kingdom of heaven and his way of doing things right. That's our strategy. The strategy of a Christian is seeking God and then finding out what to do. Right? And I often see that a lot of us say, you know, oh, and one of the things I say, this ministry is supported by people just like you. Yeah, it is. It is uh, offerings help. I mean, you pay the the monthly costs and so forth. And every time I have a technical issue, yeah, I, I use money to fix that. But you know what? We don't. We don't want to get so caught up into that that we put the physical cart before the spiritual horse. Now, think of it. If we're seeking the kingdom of heaven in His way of doing things right and letting His will in heaven be done on the earth. We've got to seek the spiritual leading of God and then follow it with the physical cart, right? Just like I'm always saying, God gave Moses the instructions of how to build the tabernacle. It was a heavenly vision. He manifested it on the earth. God told Noah how to make the boat in the heavenly vision and, and language, and he manifested it on the earth. So the, the physical cart must follow the spiritual horse. Anyway, so there you go. Um, I just wanted to bring to your attention that we need to get ourselves out of the way. We just need to get ourselves out of the way. It's really got to be about Jesus. And, and you know, even our, even our posts, you know, like, like seeking God for a great Facebook post or something is awesome. But, you know, we can't neglect the body. You know, we need to go through and pray for the people that are asking for prayer. Maybe God will give us a word. Amen? So it's not just about me and my ministry. It's about Jesus and the body of believers getting closer to Jesus. And, you know, we're in this boat together. 
We can't all be paddling different directions. We need to work in unity. Amen. So I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that that our minds, will, and emotions, spirit, and bodies all line up with your will in heaven. Lord, I pray that for that people receive prophetic dreams, Lord. You know, just dreams and visions like your word says in Joel 2 and Acts chapter 2. Lord, I pray that you draw people closer to you. Lord, and I pray that they can hear your voice more. I pray with those people that are struggling, struggling getting to you, and they're so tenaciously hugging to Scripture. Like I used to do this. I used to hug the Scripture so so tightly, and I still do. But Lord, I pray that that you encounter them through that scripture and the spirit of truth guides them in all truth. And they go, aha, thank you, Lord, for touching them with the spirit of truth while they're seeking you diligently through the word. Lord, I pray for a covering over these people that are listening, Lord. I pray for a hedge of protection about them. Lord, I pray for the prosperity. Lord, I pray for the prosperity that comes from the Lord. You know, beloved, I, brought, I, I pray that you prosper even as your soul prospers. Lord, I pray their soul prospers in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for health. Lord, I pray for health. I pray for health, Lord. Lord, I pray that we follow the Spirit and we make the right decisions. These decisions that we act upon on earth are prescribed from heaven. Lord, light up our path. Light up our feet and light up our path with your word and your spirit in Jesus' name. Thank you for being a part of Conrad Rocks. If this has touched you. You can share this. Facebook, Twitter, Google+, email. Ask people out in public if they heard the Coffee with Conrad podcast. Till we meet again, dig deeper. Go higher. Hi, this is John with John Shabba House. This is the Kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries. This is Tiffany White with Hey Ministries. This is Dan the Coffee Man. This is Glenda Linkus from WingsOfProphecy.com. Jill Dyson from Angel Street Ministry. This is Pickup Ministry for Women. This is Marianne Sansom from Google Plus. This is Charles Michael from France. Holy Desperation Ministries.org. Christine White on the Standard for the Lord. This is Janet with Overcoming Abuse God's Way. Freddie hyphenjoy.org This is Gerald Thomas in New Hebron, Mississippi This is Mordecai from Oklahoma This is Vicki at Michael's House of New Beginnings This is Stephen Barrett from Holy Fire, Japan We are Happy Coffee with Conrad ConradRocks.net See you! Happy Coffee with Conrad ConradRocks.net See you! Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.